In today's thrift store challenge, we are talking all things hearth and hand and magnolia, getting loads of inspiration, and then we are headed off to the thrift store to see what we can come up with or a whole lot less. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. In today's video, we will be primarily focusing on the kitchen, and although we've completely transformed our kitchen over the last few years, oftentimes how you style your kitchen is what really will make that impact. Starting off with greenery. If nothing else, you can add some statement greenery to your kitchen, even if you hate your cabinets, you hate your countertops, by doing this very simple addition. And this doesn't have to cost a ton of money at all. Simply go to your thrift store, go to an antique shop and find some pottery or some glassware that you really love. So for example, I found this really beautiful glass vase that was just $8 at an antique mall near me. And to fill it, I went outside and I grabbed some really tall branches and I just cut them down, taking this garland that I do plan on taking the majority of this garland to make a wreath for the springtime. But I'm just going to take off the seeded eucalyptus leaves and just attach these with some hot glue by mixing this faux situation with real eucalyptus stems, it just makes more of a statement in my kitchen. In addition to your big statement greenery on your island or your peninsula, whatever you have, I think also adding these smaller arrangements to just fill in some little vignettes is also a really great idea. So for example, I ended up finding one of these at the Goodwill bins for just 49 cents, but if you don't, I have another idea for you. So for example, even if you don't find a threshold kind of prearranged situation, you can just make your own. So I found this little guy at the Goodwill bins as well as this smaller pick and you could just very easily create something super similar. Now, obviously this is definitely more spring specific, but I can just switch this up. I'll put it in my spring box and then once spring gets closer, just replace the other one that is more neutral year round. Going back to my original inspiration, there is a lot of patinaed copper in this kitchen. So when I had previously found this vase combination for such a discounted price at the Heartfelt Thrift Shop to what it was originally costing at World Market, I just simply grabbed a combination of stems from the Goodwill outlet and I think it brings a lot of life to this corner in my kitchen. I know for many of us, finding storage solutions that are aesthetically pleasing and affordable can oftentimes be a bit of a challenge. So when I came across this Ikea roll away island cart for just $15, I thought that that was a very fair price point considering that it is normally about $150 and sold out at this moment. After bringing it inside, although it was assembled correctly, it just wasn't as sturdy as I wanted it to be. So one thing I like to do, especially with Ikea furniture is if you can and just add wood glue to some of those pegs so that way when you do reassemble it, it's just that much more secure and can tolerate a little bit more wear and tear. After reassembling it, I noticed there was a little bit of wood glue coming out of some of the seams, so I just simply wiped that off and then just sanded down the butcher block top so that way it could take an application of paint and stain. Before going in with stain, one hack I have learned that has saved me so much money and time is by just changing the undertone of the piece of furniture. So I like to go in with this dark taupe spray paint first. So that way, whenever I do apply the wax or stain, it doesn't pull to orange or yellow because my floors do have a kind of gray undertone and those orangey yellow tones just really clash. And as you can see, you do still see the grain because it's a very thin layer of paint, but the color underneath is what's changed. To give it a kind of more rustic and vintage like look, I love to use this Krylon antiquing wax and I just spread it out, but then take a chip brush and and just go in the same direction as the grain was originally, making long straight strokes across the top and then just again following the grain on the drawers so that it looks nice and seamless. What I like about this antiquing wax is it gives you a little bit of time so you can keep working with it until you're happy with the end result. As for the styling, I just took a combination of previously DIY'd or thrifted home decor pieces as well as now I have a really great area in the drawers that I can keep a lot of my kitchen textiles as well as pantry overflow, but it was so affordable because I thrifted it. 
Next up, let's talk about kitchen accessories. So whenever Hearth and Hand drops a new line, it is so tempting to buy all of the new little pieces. But you can also find really beautiful pieces just like this at the thrift store. So going back to my inspiration image, I love this crock that she has on the bottom shelf of her kitchen island. And the last time I was at the Hartville thrift shop, I found this crock. Now, if this four bothers you, you can always just flip it towards the other side because it's nice and neutral, but I actually really like the way that it looks. I have my dog treats stored in here as it is the closest thing adjacent to the door that we let him in and out of. I've shared this find before, but I also found this hearth and hand soap pump dispenser that was just $1.99 at the Goodwill. I think a lot of why sometimes people donate hearth and hand things is because they scuff really easily. But if you just take a magic eraser, it just buffs right out and it is good as new. In addition to the dispenser, I also found this caddy at my local thrift shop, the Hartville thrift shop, and that was just a dollar. I think the previous person had used it in their bathroom because there was toothpaste on it. So I just gave it a really good and deep clean and it's worked out really well. I still have it in my kitchen to this day. Another kitchen accessory that I love from the Hearth and Hand line was this cookbook stand. But one thing I've seen some designers use is actually easels. And I found this really kind of ornate brass easel here for just a dollar. But instead of putting a cookbook or a picture on that brass easel, I thought these little notepads so I could write down like if I need to do something or to buy something, I could just leave it on there, but it still looks like aesthetically pleasing and it was super affordable. If I were to go even the Target route, the more affordable route, I would be spending a small fortune, but because I thrifted it, I only spent $7 total for all of these kitchen accessories. Next up, let's talk about candles and lanterns. I really loved this greenhouse lantern on the Magnolia website. But then at the bins, I found this metal cabinet and it was just $3.89. So I ended up just removing the shelves and I removed that layer from the back. Unfortunately, there is a pretty thick scratch on the front. So if you guys have any suggestions on how I could remove that, I'm definitely willing to try. I tried a pillar and that wasn't really doing it for me so I ended up using a taper instead grabbed one of the copper pipes I have in my stash and just attached it to the bottom of this metal cabinet decor pieces like this that can bring a little bit of visual interest but also add a little bit of lighting I think are really great solutions in small spaces now let's talk about scent so the hearth and hand line has some of my favorite candles they always smell so amazing but you can also find really amazing candles at the thrift store. So this is kind of the collection that we'll be working with. So this one is the one that came from Goodwill and actually a subscriber uh, picked it out for me and he is kind of in the gardening sector. He has his own Instagram. So I will pop that up on the screen here, but he said, I definitely think you could do something with this. He was super sweet. So make sure you go check him out. And then the other ones I've either picked up at the bins or I've just bought them retail at Target. So this one being the most recent, this is originally from the Hearth and Handline, normally priced at $12.99. And I paid just 50 cents for it at the Hartville Thrift Shop. And I love the scent, but I don't love the packaging for like my kitchen space. It just feels a little bit juvenile. So we'll work with the wax in a little bit. I'm going to pop all of these in the freezer, except for this one, because the wax is already gone. But the rest of them, let's pop in the freezer so we can get the wax out easily. So then we can put it into a warmer. So for this one, just based on the shape, I think it'll go perfectly in my daughter's room with maybe some crayons or some other just decorative accessories because of its shape. Let's move these two off to the side because they're kind of the same shape. But these bowl candles here that are a bit more shallow, I think will make really great either succulent planters or moss bowl like centerpiece ideas. You could just pop some little succulents in here just to see. And then after freezing the candles, you're able to easily retrieve the wax and you're just maximizing the time you'll be able to use that scent because you could just simply add it to a warmer and then now you're left with this really beautiful container so you could display all kinds of things. For this one, I just stored some linen napkins and some napkin rings. And then for this amber one, you just wanna focus on the shape. So I could use this as a tea light candle holder. I could also use it to store like cotton pads in a bathroom or toothpicks in a kitchen. 
Next up, let's talk about decorative storage. So the Hearth and Handline at Target gives a lot of really great options that are honestly pretty affordable for what you're getting. But if you only really need one basket and you're not trying to match it to anything else, I do recommend checking your thrift store to see what you can find. Because oftentimes, if it's just one, like I found this chicken wire basket that was really modern in shape, reminded me so much of this one from Magnolia, but will still serve the purpose at a much more affordable price point. Next up, let's talk about cutting boards and wood boards. And that, going back to the inspiration, is something you guys have seen me try to replicate many times before. For example, I took this wood round, did a checker print technique. I've also taken the top of a bar stool, added some decorative hardware to make like a cutting board that is vintage and aged. Most recently at the Goodwill bins, I found this wooden plaque that had a hanger kit on the back, but instead of using it up on the wall, I decided that I would have a better use for it on my kitchen counter to place the warmer and other decorative accessories. Alternatively, you can get a lot of inspiration by going to an antique mall because they will place things that you wouldn't maybe consider putting up on the wall. And doing that instead, I found this brass hook at the Goodwill bins for pennies on the dollar, decided to place this wood slicer as well as my black apron. And it just adds a lot of texture and draws the eyes up in my kitchen space. Next up, let's talk about your kitchen textiles. So that could be a little runner in your kitchen, kitchen towels, napkins, tablecloths, and all of those little accessories that really add a lot of texture to your kitchen. So I like to go to the thrift store and usually I can at least find one or two things that will really complement my space really well. I love this pinstripe one. It was nice and neutral and only a dollar. An area of my kitchen that I don't typically share with you guys for good reason is my kitchen, my kitchen at table that we are definitely very rough with. If you don't know, I have a two and four year old and they're home with me most of the time and we're coloring on the table and we're making different crafts and we're playing with Play-Doh or we're doing clay projects or sensory bins. In this season of life, for me, I don't think it makes sense to spend $2,000 on a table that I know we will just eventually destroy. So we're riding this one out until they're a little bit older. But in the meantime, when I have company over and I don't want them to see this, I think going a textile route is the kind of best solution and you can find amazing vintage textiles at antique stores or even at thrift stores that you can just make a quick and easy tablecloth so I really loved this pattern it matches my kitchen cabinets pretty perfectly and then it has kind of like the black and the warm undertones of the wood so it was like the perfect fabric to find and I have more than enough to at least make a tablecloth or two and I'm just going to put the good sides facing together obviously just remove that and then I'm just gonna buzz it through the sewing machine to get a really pretty tablecloth I also found these really sweet little fringe napkins which I can place on top of like a plate with a napkin ring I have these really good wood ones that I've had for years and they are great but I also thought about trying these curtain rings because I found a huge bag of these brown curtain rings store at my local thrift shop the Hartwell thrift shop and I thought this would make a cute little if you're having a lot of people over you could even use the clip to like attach their name to it or something or I could combine multiples of these to make more of like a thick napkin ring but these could be used in so many different ways and I have a ton left over so if you guys have any ideas on what I could do with these let me know and last but not least, no kitchen for me is really complete in its styling if it doesn't have at least one or two cookbooks. And I personally love the Magnolia cookbooks, but you can also find really beautiful and inspiring cookbooks at your local thrift stores for such an affordable price point. I think the thing to just keep in mind is does it match the rest of your color scheme? And is it something that you would actually reference if you wanted to make something? And that really wraps it up for today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful. Let me know down in the comments which find or project was your favorite, and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye for now.